Charles E J O E Business. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed my reaction. All right. Some more Trevor Noah. All right. Name of this is Sports in America. Trevor Noah, African American. Longer re release. Why does it say African American? Trevor Noah. All right. It doesn't matter. So here, I'm going to tell you guys a quick story, okay? So, Trevor Noah, Trevor Noah. All right, he was, um, he's still doing this, this show on Comedy Central. It's called The Daily Show, all right? So the first time I saw it, it was him. I was like, what the hell is going on? You know, I thought, first time, for some reason, I thought he was from, like, the UK, all right? So that was, I only heard him just real quick, all right? So shut up, don't get mad at me. So when I saw an interview with him, and how he was from South Africa. And I was like, ain't that a bitch? You know, I didn't know. Then he talked about uh, the apartheid. And um, I started watching more of his stuff. You know, my family saw his stuff. And you know, just ended up liking him, man. So, let's watch this right here, okay? See how it is, all right? Sports in America. Let's see what the hell Trevor's talking about. Let's get it. You guys love your sports out here. I've never seen more focus put on sports anywhere else in the world. Americans love their sports back to front. You analyze them. You, you worship them. You, you watch the game before the game. You watch the game after the game. You talk about what might happen in the game. You talk about what's happening in the game. And then you talk about what happened in the game and what could have and might have but didn't happen in the game. It's just the craziest thing I've seen in my life. It's all about statistics. Have you seen sports in America? Nonstop. Guys just come out there. There's no time for smiles or anything. Just come out. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to it. It's the 2012 Miami Heat up against the OKC. This is the greatest final we've been waiting for in the NBA Finals. LeBron James leading his team out here, averaging 30 points, a double-double every single game, uh, 10 points per game uh, just in assists alone. This man is just something else. 90% from the free throw line. He's just gone in. He's statistically gotten better. His team coming in with more. Chris Bosh coming in with more assists. Really doing well in the last game. Just like, wow, wow. Numbers, 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 stats, stats, stats. You guys know everything. Every stat. Well, I mean, he's got four out of five. And I mean, if you look at that statistic alone, it, it looks like he should be, he should be getting forward. He should be. And then, and then, and then it's just, it's just crazy. You know everything. You know everything. And then you switch over to like your business channels and your economy and you're like what, what what's happening in the economy this year bob <laughs> well no, nobody knows I mean, <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows yeah. <laughs> uh, we thought the housing market was coming up but it wasn't <laughs> but hey i mean that's that's the economy you never know right you never know what about stocks well i guess uh, stocks they're up and down I don't really know. They're up and down. They could go anywhere. It's, um, those are stocks. We don't know. <laughs> but the sports, you know? You need to flip that around. You need to get the statistics in the, in the economy. Just relax in your sports. Have fun. I, that's the sports I watch is relax, like soccer. I'm a huge fan of soccer, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's some fans here. I love soccer. It's just chilled. You hear it in the commentators when a game is being played. There's no statistics at all. Game starts off, the whistle blows, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this majestic match. Majestic. It's Spain playing against Germany. Oh, and what a wonderful day it is. <laughs> Look at the crowd, really excited. Oh, and the atmosphere is amazing. Wonderful weather, and the guys are just like, oh, yeah, John, you can feel it. The players look great. It's wonderful. What do you think is going to happen today, Martin? Oh, nobody knows. <laughs> I can't even remember the last time I saw a game this good. Americans will remember. Americans will go back to the finest statistic. The last time a black man <laughs> scored using his left hand jumping over a mixed race half Indian was in 1967 when the OK, they're like, what? This is madness. The only thing was so funny about that, that shit is the truth. Like, real talk, they'd be doing stats like, oh, man, this is the, Steph Curry is the first time he's ever did this since a white man just, like, against a, why well, I say white man, look at because of what he's saying. He'd be like, oh, Steph Curry, this is the first time you ever shot 
10 free throws without missing a long with 10 three-pointers ever since Larry Bird or just something. It's like, like, what are you doing? Like, oh, Kawhi Leonard, he's the youngest person to ever do this since such and such. It's like, what makes you even take notes on that? Like, for real, it makes no sense. I was talking to one of my friends. It's like, how? Like, where did they find this stuff at? All right. Anyways, let's go back. <laughs> It's all about action in the sports as well, you know? As much action as possible. That's all about action in America. That is so action focused, you will take the ball away from the other team if they do not give you enough action. I've never seen that in my life. That's a horrible way to bring people up. Just go to the other team, you go, hey, you guys, you take the ball, and you've got 24 seconds to get the ball in that net. 24 seconds, and if you don't do it, we're gonna give the ball to the other team, you hear me? We're gonna give the ball to the other team. Yeah, we know there's a lot of black guys, you try to get past them. That's up to you. Go! 24 seconds later, bah! You guys, you try, you try. <laughs> All about action, you know? Because America's different. It's different from the rest of the world. And uh, you, you, you don't really... Ah, commercial, shit! I'm Lisa Sevierski. Know how different America is, though, until you get here. That's the one thing I will say. You know, you, you think you know. But then when you, when you land in America, in your airports, that's when you know this place is, yeah, this place is different. Because American airports, unlike airports everywhere in the world, which have a certain level of joy and just <laughs> all around happiness, American airports, they like, they're like concentration camps, you know? <laughs> it's just people walking barefoot in single file. <laughs> That's well, so it's, true. It's no joke. There's even signs that say no jokes. You don't, you're like, really? It's just insane. You, you walk through those airports and, and you have to do things in American airports you don't do anywhere else in the world, you know? Like you, you have to take your shoes off. Your shoes come off and you, you don't know this as a foreigner, but they don't care. They're like, yo, take your shoes off. I'm like, my what? Your shoes, take them off. Like, Why? <laughs> for safety, sir. I'm, like, I'm keeping them on for your safety, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do this anywhere. I remember flying into Dubai one year, and as we get into the airport, this woman, an American woman, started taking off her shoes and, her, and those guys. I mean, you must understand, when you're in the Middle East as a woman, you're already a sin. And now to be taking your clothes off in public, these guys lost their mind. They were just like, Hillary, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yo, what are you doing? She's like, I'm taking my clothes off. I'm taking, they're like, no, no, no. No, what are you doing? She's like, I'm taking them off. Why are you taking your clothes off? She's like, so the machine works. She's like, no, no. This is machine, not your husband. You don't need to get naked. Put your clothes on and walk through, you whore. They were just, they were, you don't do it anywhere else. But then you come out here, you have to take off your shoes and you have to take your jacket off to walk through the metal detector. You, and they, and they, they are mean about it. They will shout to you, they're like, you, take it off, take it off. And, and you don't know what to take off. You don't take it off anywhere else, so you don't know what to take off. So you're like, you, take it off, take, take what off? Take it off, sir, take what off? Take it off now! What, your clothes, take them, my clothes? <laughs> and now you're standing there, this man shouting at you, telling you to take your clothes off. You feel like a child in a Catholic church. It's horrible, it's just, you're just standing there. I mean, I understand the need for security, but they don't need to shout at you. At least, if they, you know, if they tried to be nice, if they were, maybe if they chanted instead of shouting, you know, instead of, take it off, if they were like, take it off, take it off, take, you'd be like, yeah, woo, security. <laughs> Safe and sexy. <laughs> they don't. This is a harrowing experience as you come in. And, and the worst is when you have to go through passport control. Oh, as Americans, you don't feel the pain. But as a foreigner, it's a whole different game. As Americans, you, you walk through to the US citizens line and they welcome you back like you on some secret mission. And you say, <laughs> welcome home, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're a foreigner, you have to wait in a super long line, you know, and then they tease you. The line goes right to the front, and then it comes back, and it comes back, and, and you finally get there, and you have to wait for that, you know? 
And he's standing there, and the guys are like, sir, sir, come on, come on. Sir, step forward. For step forward, sir. Step forward. For forward. Forward. Back. Back. Behind the line, sir. Back. <laughs> Get back, sir. Get back. And she knows the stress. You're standing there. And, and, and now you have to answer questions. Horrible. Like, you, you don't understand. It's, it's, it's the stress, you know? You're standing there, and you, you don't want to get any of the questions wrong. Because just like school, they'll send you back. <laughs> so you stand there, and you have to answer them into a microphone that's placed strategically low. Almost so that you have to bow to the American as you answer <laughs> every question of his. <laughs> they ask you these questions. Questions you feel like you know the answers to, but when you're there... I mean, I just handed the man my passport, to which he replied, Is this you? <laughs> Never before have I felt so much pressure to look like myself. And I was like... <laughs> I was younger then. <laughs> it's horrible. And then he starts rattling them off. It's your first time in the United States of America, sir? Uh, yes. Your first time, sir, is that correct? Uh, yes. <laughs> sir, what is the duration of your visit out here? I'm going to be here for six months. Six months, sir? Is that correct? <laughs> yes. Sir, what is the purpose of your visit in the United States of America? I'm here for holiday. Holiday, sir? Yes. Which one? <laughs> My one. Could you elaborate, sir? Holiday. Yeah, what do you mean holiday, sir? You know, like holiday, like... That, that'd be funny if somebody does that Holiday. too. You mean vacation, sir? Ah, battery. Yes, of course. I'm hella weak, yo. That was so true with what he was saying about sports. I've never gone to out the country. Well, I have, but I was 13, so I don't even remember. But uh, that was pretty funny. All right. Anyways, you guys, let me know how you guys feel about that. Man, Trevor Noah right there. You already know what it is, all right? We up out of here.